Hi, my name is Mike Schaffner. I'm the owner of Fridley Minoko. We're on the corner of Central and Osborne in Fridley. Today we're going to be performing a degrease and die test on a vehicle that was brought in for an oil change and we noticed an oil leak. So we go through a three part process to verify where the leak is coming from. So I'm going to go through today and show you that process. As you can see here, from the bottom of the vehicle, there's obviously some fresh oil dripping in a few areas. This is the engine starter here. This is the oil pan. There's also actually a, a sign of coolant over here on the... That's a, that's a green color. The way we tell the fluid is by the color of the fluid, and we can actually compare it to the, to the dipstick. So in this case, this is pretty much obviously engine oil based on the color. The transmission fluid is red, engine oil is brown, coolant is green. That's kind of the telltale on that. But uh, one thing I look for in an oil leak like this, a lot of times, you know, where the freshest drips are, you can see that it'll kind of wash an area out. But this stuff is kind of spread everywhere. So there's there's oil on the starter, oil on the pan, oil on the back of the motor, oil up on the motor mount, and that's that's so there's no obvious spot where it's coming from. Sometimes it's more obvious. So in a case like this. What we do is we go through a three-part process. I'm gonna explain that to you. Uh, what we do is we, the first thing we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna clean this engine with degreaser and a power washer, like a pressure washer. So we spray it down, let it soak. We pressure wash the whole thing with a, you know, a high pressure a high pressure power washer. Uh, we dry it off with a blow gun. Then we have a fast drying solvent that we spray down with next, they call it brake cleaner or parts cleaner. That, that gets rid of any small residual oil that's left. We blow that off with an air gun. By the time we're done, this thing will be basically like a clean slate, just all super dry. So that's the first part of the process. The second part of the process is actually to put a dye into the oil. I'm gonna bring that dye over here and I'll show it to you. Um, this is the dye right here. It's called Ultraviolet Reactive Dye. Uh, they make it different brands. This is from CarQuest, but Basically, this is a, it's kind of like a glow-in-the-dark fluid that reacts to a black light. So what we do, this is actually oil safe, it's coolant safe. There, there's different types, but this is for oil. Um, we dump it in the oil, drive the car for about 15, 20 minutes, bring it back in, put it in the air, and then we shine a black light up inside the, up inside the engine area where any, any suspected leaks are at. And it should be glowing in the dark, basically, where those leaks are. So the reason we do that is because on an engine like this, there's, there's more than one area it can be leaking from. You have the valve covers, you have the intake, you have, you know, there's oil pressure sitting in it, so there's the oil pan, there's the drain plug, there's, there's literally 10 or, 10 or more places it can be leaking from. So a lot of times you'll have more than one leak. You might have you know, a valve cover gasket as well as an oil pan leaking. And we want to make sure we're going to focus the money on the leak that's the main cause. So uh, the reason being is, number one, we don't want to put money towards something that's not going to fix anything. <laughs> that's a waste of money. but. Basically, we're after the, the only reason we would fix a leak. Normally, I mean, every car has some seepage, okay, but we're actually after fixing a leak that affects fluid level or is actually getting onto a component that could damage it. So, in this case, we do have some. We have two situations going on. Number one, the fluid level of the oil is a little bit low between oil changes, about one quart. So, it's losing enough oil between oil changes to be a quart low. That's quite a bit. And number two, it's actually getting onto a motor mount up in the front here. So, motor mounts get rotted out from oil. So we want to make sure we get that remedied as well. So uh, that's the gist of that. So I'm going to go through now and do the next process of cleaning it. This is a uh, this is degreaser. It's actually a pretty caustic solution. Um, it's got it's actually got a lye in it of all things, but it dissolves the oil and dirt and uh, soluble water. And it is it's it's safe to go down the drain. So we just spray the whole engine down top and bottom. But I start on the top. So. This is really kind of powerful stuff. It cleans very well. So that's the first part. That's the top side. sprayed the bottom of the car with the greaser. It's been sitting for about 10 minutes, so I'm sure all that oil and, and residue down there is pretty well dissolved. So 
The next step is to actually power spray this, pressure wash itself. Okay, now we've got the car pressure washed and cleaned. We're ready to do the next part of the test. I just want to kind of show you uh, how clean it got down here. So, before there was a lot of oil all over the oil pan, there was oil on the starter, there was oil everywhere down there. This whole training pan was full of oil, the transmission. And now we're basically all cleaned up down here, so there's really no, there's really no oil left. There's a little trace on this cable, but we know that's already been there, so it looks pretty clean down here, so. Okay, this is the this is the uh, spot where we put the die in. This is where you would, you know, put your motor oil in the engine. Same spot. We're just going to add this right into the engine oil. So you just pour it right in there. I just did that. So the die has been installed in there. And now the next step is to go for about a half hour test drive. Usually we drive them for, you know, 15, 15 to minutes to a half an hour, somewhere in that range. Bring it back and then recheck it. So we're hoping it should be pretty obvious. There was there was a pretty good leak before. So so we just drove the car for about 30 minutes. We brought it back in the shop, put it up in the air, and we did use the black light, which we have here, and there was some pretty obvious stuff going on, so I'm gonna make my best attempt to show you that here. So if you look down here, on the front of the crankshaft, there's two areas. You can see that glow in the dark stuff going on there. On the front of the engine up here, on the bottom of the oil pan, on the front bolt, you can see a glow in the dark uh, area here that's been dripping, so that's new and fresh. On the bottom of the crankshaft seal, there's also another area there. She's glowing a little bit there, and I can see the kind of wetness from the fresh oil. That's also coming off the oil pan, so these things are pretty common to have oil pan issues, so we're not surprised to see that. Uh, and I also see some glowing on the back right here, on the back of this little, right here. That means this fresh oil is glowing here, so it's also coming out of the rear of the oil pan. So, basically we need an oil pan for sure, and then I noticed one more item. On the back of the valve cover, I'm going to try to show you that part now. The back of the valve cover does have a little bit of oil coming out of that as well. So you probably have to come around the back side to see that. But there's more than one leak here today. So but we, we've located three areas where, where, where we see leakage. So. so basically what we found on this, on this oil leak was that the oil pan was leaking and also the, the rear valve cover was leaking. There was a few spots we had suspected. We didn't suspect the oil pan, but this, this verifies it. So there's a few other areas that we tested. Uh, there was some oil above the starter that we thought might have been coming from, you know, possibly an oil pressure setting in it, but it turns out that was just residue oil from the oil filter when they changed the oil. So uh, that was actually the, the there was that was the wettest spot, but that's very dry now, so no issues there. So the reason we do this test, like I said before, is so we can actually pinpoint the real leak. We don't want to spend money towards something that's not going to cure the, the problem that's affecting the level of the oil. So in this case, we know we need the oil pan, we need the valve covers replaced, and that should remedy everything. Um, so that's basically it. That's how the process works. Thank you. So now that we've completed the process, we have determined that the oil pan was leaking oil and also the rear valve cover was leaking oil. So the recommended repairs in this case are going to be the oil pan gasket and the valve cover gaskets. So there were some other areas that we thought might have been leaking, but you know that's why we do this test. We want to make sure we're, we're pinpointing the leak and, and putting the money towards the actual leak. So. Uh, that's basically it. So the next part is to write up an estimate for the oil pan gasket replacement and the valve cover gasket replacement and then move forward. Again, this is Mike from Fridley Minoco. We're on the corner of 65 and Osborne in Fridley. Look for more of our YouTube videos on car repair and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.